Stepping onto the scene with her signature low-cut look, she quickly captured all of our hearts and became a presenter. She evolved quickly to become an amazing actress with leading roles in God's Calling, Sylvia, and of course, the Wedding Party series. My guest today is someone very special, Zainab Balogu Wachiku. You are the worst! Wachiku! <laughs> I got the last name right, right? You did, you did. So she had to correct me on the last name because the last I, I just... I just knew her as Zena Balogun. You put the old me up in there. You know? Yeah. How are you, Zena? I, I, it's, it's really weird to I be know. on a couch with you. <laughs> like, but it's going to be fun. It is going to be fun. I'm going to try not to giggle so much. Because you know okay. I love you, right? I know. And so many people love what it is that you did. I specifically put the signature low-cut look in there. Yeah, which is not there anymore. I know. Yeah. How do you feel about it? Um, Life is a lot more... Well, my hair is a lot more expensive. Okay. Um, because I would just literally go to the barber pay my 500 naira yeah. and I'm done. Um, but I just wanted a different look. Like mm. almost, nine, yeah, between nine to 10 years being low cut is a very long time. How did you first get low cut? Um, I was growing out my hair natural and I was impatient. So my hair was permed. And you know when you're growing out, you have like the tiny little perm parts at the end that mm -hmm. just looks kind of scanty and awful. So I went to the, uh, to the salon and I said, dude, just take it all off. I don't have time for this. Yeah. I didn't realize what I was asking for. Because when I left, like the breeze that was on my head. <laughs> this was in the UK. This was in the UK. Okay. And honestly, I felt like everybody was staring at me. Mm. It was so strange. Yeah. Like I would hide in the house um, until it grew out a little bit because it was just, yeah, it was weird. And then um, I was modeling at the time, so photographers really loved it because it brought out my face. I was mm. like, okay, this thing, it's not bad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's bringing small money. Did you get more not? or less attention? More. Yeah. 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 Um, some people thought I was a rebel. Uh, some people thought I was just being extra. My mom did not understand what I was trying to do at all. She would literally bribe me with things for me to grow my hair back. I mean, I think it was, it was such a good move, right? And talking about going into the industry, I remember mm -hmm. the first time I actually ever saw you was in Nato C's music video. What song was yeah. that? Yeah, um, I Gentle. I Gentle. I will never yeah. forget. Me and you, I Gentle. And yeah. there's a shot that has Zayn I'm going like, you know, just posing and, you and know, stuff. Just posing. That was my first and last and ever music video. Um, you I were was, a video girl. No, <laughs> no, don't say that. Nothing wrong with video girls. Um, I was a model in a video. Mm -hmm. um, I was studying and the stylist uh, had called me, who I'm friends with, and she was like, oh, I'm doing Nato's video. I really, really need your help. And she was a stylist and designer at the time. Okay. So, you know, I was trying to get in with her and hopefully model in her lookbook. And so for me, it was like a good networking exchange. Mm. So I get on set and it's a full blown music video. So it was myself and this other girl called Lamitron, mm. um, gorgeous girl. And this other um, model who was like, she was a popular video model. Mm -hmm. So you have these two skinny girls trying to look cute in a mm -hmm. video. And it was just, it was strange. So video. you were in the UK then and you yeah. grew up, you, were, you grew up in the UK. Yes, I was born and raised. Coming back to Nigeria, why? What even prompted that move? So... <laughs> um, I came back, you know, for Christmases and Easter periods. Um, and in 2009, I came back for about three months with a friend of mine, Stephanie Coca. Okay. Um, I'd literally met Steph maybe about two months before. And she was like, oh, I'm going to go to Nigeria. I'm doing this thing. She was doing her presenter thing. And we had an online entertainment show that we produced and presented together. So we decided to come to Nigeria. Uh, go to a bunch of shows, interview celebrities, just show people what life is like, mm -hmm. you know, that Nigeria is a fun place to be. And we were doing that for a while. And then we hear, um, we hear about an audition for a brand new TV show, which uh, a lot of people would now know as The Island. Yes. <laughs> which was way ahead of its time. Um, we got casted. I was in it. Stephanie, Eku, Tools, DJ Case, DJ Exclusive. Omotola. Like, Omotola. Oh, like, was everybody was on that series. And we shot, uh, I believe, an episode for the pilot before I left. And so the director, Tolo Odissi, says to me, okay, yeah, well, you know, you've got the job. Like, so you're going to need to come back. What are you doing? So we now booked a ticket for me to come back a year after because I had one more year left at uni. Okay. I didn't tell my parents that's what I was doing. Yeah. Um, the following year when it was time for me to leave, I graduated, packed my bags, showed up, 
and my mom realized that I wasn't leaving. Like you a month back. in, I was still there. Six months, I was still there. And she was like, what are you doing? Like, you're not going to law school? Like, what, what exactly is this thing? Mm -hmm. So her and um, Tola became close because he was then like my okay. big brother who would explain to her, okay. this is what we're doing. This is the show. Don't worry. She's not in dancing <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> It's all right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, after I, I mean, what's interesting is why did you were in America? You were in the UK, yeah. and you have a promising career there as well yeah. because you're modeling there. You were in Dark Knight Rising yes. as well, Christopher Nolan's movie. Yeah. What made you decide to say, "Let me jump in to so this Nigerian space"? In that um, in that year, it was between New York or Lagos. Mm. I think why Nigeria had the advantage was because I came and I got a job offer. That was the difference, mm. was that there was money on the table. Uh, I had family there. I didn't have to think about living costs. Um, and I was like, okay, well, I'm, I'm African. I'm Nigerian. I'm going to come and make it in my own space. It's going to be easier for me. Yeah. The competition isn't going to be that. The same. That, it's not going to mm. be the same. Mm. Um, and it's black on black. Like, you know, it's, it's going to be okay. Yeah. It, it'll be easier for me to kind of rise faster mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Oh, boy. Be shocked. Do you feel like sometimes you wish you had stayed back in the UK longer or exchange the given first the experience differently? Three to four years um, was me saying to myself that I may not last here. Um, it was four years moving on that I started realizing that this, the way I built my career and personality, it's the long game. Mm. It's not going to be uh, instant su success or having people understand what you're trying to build and trying to be professional and create standards. Mm -hmm. It's going to take time. And I found that it's, it's paid off. So my road is different. It's, it's slow at times, but yeah. I'm, I'm happy with it. Now, I want to talk about a pivotal moment that happened for you last year. Okay, what's that? I mean, you got married. Oh, I did, didn't I? <laughs> and the whole world was like, how? What happened? What? What's oh, okay, that's about? actually <laughs> reminding me <laughs> of our WhatsApps and me, yeah, being on my friends and people be like, don't tell them. So Zena, no. let me tell you, Zena was threatening yeah. people. Don't tell Good anybody. Love. Then I remember, I think I saw someone's at your HIV somewhere and then someone had told yeah, that it was your way. Somebody had dropped it off and at she the was tailor. Like, Who is the person? Yeah. First of all, mm -hmm. why, why the intense level of privacy about the wedding? So. Whether or not people like it, I'm a public figure, but I'm a very, very, very private individual. Mm. I separate my business and work life from my personal life. Mm -hmm. I don't know, because for me, that's, it's a lot more precious than the personality. Mm -hmm. um, it's what I have to live with. It's what I'm going to spend the rest of my life with when you know I'm older and I can't be doing modeling anymore or yeah. my social media influencing work isn't going too well. So it's very, very, very precious to me. Mm -hmm. And I don't play with that. Mm. Um, because I wanted, I wanted to feel the experience. Okay. I wanted to be able to say that, okay, Shola did... She wrapped the gifts and she wrapped it in this because she wanted it like this and we talked about it and I will never forget her. She, she just won't be a vending number yeah, or a transaction. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I'm happy that everybody that was involved was very respectful. Um, although, you know, you do find some people that you didn't invite that were there. <laughs> I knew when, I was anal. You were so anal. When we were dancing, like, she was like, I don't think I remember that person being invited. And I, the only reason why I couldn't go up to them and say, um, hi, was because <laughs> there were cameras everywhere. Say that. I don't, yeah, I remember saying to you I that. You did say um, that. You did say that. There are two people here. I did not. Well, well, let's talk about, you know, finding love. Yeah. I mean, what has that been like? Because we, we were single together. And we Girl! were in the streets together. <gasps> and we did that, went there, went through heartbreak together, and oh, then yeah. you finally find love. What, what has that experience been like for you? And finding love with someone who has been married before, yep. is older, but it's funny as heck as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, I am a hopeless romantic. Yeah. I love love. Um, I, did, I honestly didn't envision that I would get married as soon as I did. Um, for me, it's always been about connections, mm. right? I've never particularly dated guys for what they had or what I felt like they could give me. Mm -hmm. You know, you come with that ride or die mentality. So when you meet someone that 
is the definition of kindness, mm. of partnership, of love, of understanding. Like, it just makes life easy. Mm -hmm. I think that's when you realize that this, somebody is for you, when it's not hard. When you don't have to beg somebody for attention, you don't have to beg them to communicate with you. They love what you do, mm. they push you. Um, it just, it feels effortless. Mm -hmm. And my, I always used to say my partner, so sometimes when I say my husband, it just like, um, it clicks. My husband has always been supportive of who I am mm. because he's like, this is who I met. You are an actress, you are a presenter, you are an influencer, this is what your work requires. And I'm going to be a part of that journey. Mm. So if you need me to help you decide if the script is good for you or if we're going to talk through a contract and whether or not it's going to work for where you're trying to go, um, it just, that's when you just know yeah. it makes and sense. It, and it clicked for you. Like you it knew did. you were going to marry him like soon after you started dating. So we were, we were friends. Um, we were introduced by a mutual friend. <laughs> Um, Choma, uh, Omero, Chigo. Chigo. Chigo, do my own now. Ah, she got, she got the spirit. Like, okay. Choma has, I don't even know how many marriages she has under her belt. Like, she's just a blessing. Um, so they're really great family friends. Um, and she was like, oh, I have a guy, you know, he really likes you. We always joke and call you Slaynab and blah, blah, blah. Um, so we met, we had coffee. And, you know, instantly, I was like, ah. I think I want to be friends. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, but we just built a really, really good bond. Like he became someone that I was talking to all the time. Yeah. Like I would talk to him about other guys. It was so weird. Mm. And he would just be there on the phone that, see this person that we're trying to toast that is telling me about <laughs> another person. And it was interesting because there would be breaks in communication for mm. us where we might not speak for a while, but the moment he starts like speaking to another person, I'd show up. Mm. Um, my birthday... He had taken me to dinner and um, taken me to dinner the day after my birthday. And when people would see us, they'd be like, oh, how come you and Zainab are not dating? So I said, oh, we're just friends, we're cool, whatever. Oh, she seems like a nice girl, you're a nice guy, you guys should get together. So we have dinner and he says to me, why are we not dating? I'm like, I don't know. It's like, okay, let's do it then. And that's how we became boyfriend and girlfriend. Yeah. Um, and within the first week, I realized that we were going to get married. Wow. Um, what was it about him that just... Because we were planning our lives. It was weird. Mm. Like, we knew where we were going to live, how many more children we were going to have, our work. Um, before, like, literally a month and a half after, I was already doing interior designing for his new space. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was the first person yeah. to live in the house, to move into the house, mm. to spend a night in the house. Mm -hmm. um, whenever uh, we were getting like a new nanny, he'd say, no, you do the interviews mm. because they need to know that you're going to be here mm -hmm. and you're a permanent fixture yeah. here. So he was just like, shoot, let's just get you and let's put all the pieces together yeah. and do what we need to do. Um, and then he has an amazing family. Like I tell people all the time. I have the best in-laws in the world. Yeah, yeah. You pray for a marriage, but sometimes you forget to pray for in-laws. Mm. I, I can't explain how, how perfect they are. Like, we're constantly gisting. We have a family group that's rotten. I cannot tell anyone what happens <laughs> in that group. Um, my mother-in-law is constantly... Zibs, what do you need? I've got this, I've got that. You know, I want to get you this. Um, I was just going to the market. I'm going to buy you guys some more yams. Like, yeah. they are just the best. What was it like when you first met the boys? What was that experience like? Um, I think it was, I just went round to, went round to my um, mother-in-law's house. Yeah. And I think I was just meeting up with Diko at the house and stuff. And so I was Auntie Zainab. And they were... Had, had he said they Auntie were, Zainab with a special? Or no, just, no, no, no. Okay. I was just Auntie Zainab. And I remember my husband saying to me, he was like, they really like you. I was like, how can you tell? Because suddenly, they, he was like, they're performing. And I didn't notice. So oh, they were... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. They would now come and like, oh, let me show you this. And just, oh, I can do this. And then like, I can do this cartwheel like this. And so they were now like... They were like peacocks showing their feathers, and I didn't realize. Yeah. I was like, yeah, they, they really, because they don't do that. Mm. Like, 
they just started putting on a show. Yeah. Um, but then we, we started spending time together, you know, we do all the fun stuff. Um, but I will, I've never told this story. <laughs> I'll never, never ever forget when I told them that, when we told them that we were going to get married. It was such a, such a special moment. Mm. Um, so I remember they were sitting down and uh, I said to them, I recorded it actually. They didn't know I was recording. And I said to them that, you know, me and daddy are thinking about getting married. So how would you feel about if, you know, if you came your mom and got married and stuff? And it was so weird. They burst into tears. Ooh. It was so weird now that I'm thinking about it. And I think they were just so happy. They were just so happy. And for me, it just made sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. And you've been such a good mom. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. She's we did such not, a good mom. We did not She's plan for that. She's such a good mom. You know, it's such a beautiful thing to see when true love happens. What have you feel like you've had to change? Have you had to change anything in your career? Um, or the way you conduct your career now that no, you're I mean, I just it. have to, uh, I multitask a lot better now. <laughs> Um, my husband is very, very supportive and he's such an amazing, like, hands-on dad. Like, yeah. he thinks he's, like, the best chef in the world. <laughs> Don't tell him I said he's not. Yeah. I mean, he's good, but, yeah, yeah. all that. Yeah. Um, so he makes sure that he's at all the games. Like, he's, he always used to say that he was, <laughs> he was, like, everybody's favorite dad at school. Um, and then, you know, now I come along, so, <laughs> um, um. This year, mm -hmm. movie roles. Mm. Are you excited about any projects? Um, I've been reading a bunch of stuff. Um, I want to be able to produce something this year, uh, probably a short film oh for festivals gosh, and that's stuff. That's wonderful. I'm also hoping to do a lot more international work, okay, good. Um, acting wise. Uh, again, j just waiting for the right stories to yeah. come in. Um, but outside of acting, my business life keeps me very busy yeah. uh, outside of the textiles I also have a uh, skincare brand mm. that I have been working on for the last two years mm. called Control uh, CTRL and that excites it, it excites me because at times I wonder whether or not acting is going to be forever yeah. especially just looking at the state of affairs mm. and I want to be able to add value to people's lives and I didn't feel like my entertainment life did that okay. I think I show people places and food and you know have fun and makeup mm -hmm. and stuff but that's all very lightweight yeah i want to be able to help someone either learn or help someone um create opportunities for themselves mm -hmm. and i feel like i can add better value um with the the skincare brand so uh by the grace of god this year uh we will be launching our first product mm -hmm. so i'm very excited about so it. i want you to play a game with me okay. we're going to do give your breast impersonation so I will call the name of someone, and you have to do an impersonation of them. Oh, my All God. All right, so the very first one is Shola Shabawali. <laughs> oh, yeah, speak to your mother. No, yeah, no, no. Oh, yeah. That, that's, my, that's my mommy. No, 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 no. <laughs> but you got it with the eyes. She, I love her. She's so, so dramatic. She's I a love trip. her. Ibuka, you worked with him for years. Oh, my gosh. That's him on the spot. Yeah. Okay, do him on rubbing mics. <laughs> That's pretty good. Do him slaying on Instagram. <laughs> He's such a swag he daddy. He is like the worst. Okay, Oprah. No, Oprah's yeah. more excited. Really? Yeah. You get a car, you get a car, you get a car. That's only when she's giving stuff. True, true, true. I wish she would give me a car. I really do. Yeah, but she's not, yeah. Um, describe your life in a hashtag. Sweet. Really? Yeah. Like, you're sweet? No, my life is sweet. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's brilliant. Zena, follow go, watch it go. Hey, Thank girl. Thank you so much for coming Thanks for on having the show. Me. I'm going to give you a hug. <laughs> Uh, it was so good having you. I appreciate you being so open and honest. Thanks, I know you're very private. 
And um, I think people would, I feel like I know, I feel like I know you more. Yeah, you do. I do, I do. You know, whenever we just we always just about Jesus women. nonsense. Mommy, <laughs> God, Bible. True. Yeah. You know? We kill each other with Jesus. Yeah. We have a WhatsApp group called Baby Girls for Jesus. That's right. And it's That's a good thing game. to know that you love the Lord. Yeah. I'm so excited to see what's going to happen this year. Zena, thank you so much for coming on the show. This is The Juice. Make sure that you comment down below and let me know what you thought. We want to hear from you. And who do you want to see on the next episode of The Juice? My name is Balale. Do not forget to subscribe on all of our social media platforms. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.